Good morning. Praise the Lord. We're on the air. My name is uh, Pastor Rodney T. Whaley. name of our church is the Supernatural Faith Church out in Irving, Texas. For all the listeners that's been out there, we've changed our time to Saturday at 10 a.m. Central Time. We're going to do it one day out the week. Pastor got a lot of other projects going on, but we're going to continue to try to keep this uh, internet radio broadcast going. You know, that's something that God has placed on my heart to do. We're going to we're going to continue to keep it going no matter what. Let's go to uh, Psalms 150. Psalms 150 reads, "Praise ye the Lord, Hallelujah." Thank you, Jesus. See, we're going to continue to praise God, no matter who supports the church financially, physically, no matter who leaves the church. We're going to continue to preach the gospel. See, the thing about this gospel, brothers and sisters, that is Jesus and the rest of us. He's in a class all about him, by himself. It has nothing to do with Pastor Whaley. It has nothing to do with Bishop so-and-so, Sister so-and-so. I know you think it's about you, but it's about Jesus. When we get to heaven, no one is going to focus on you and I. They're going to focus on the Lord. The scripture says they're throwing their crowns at the feet of the Lamb. Let's go. Psalms 150 says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Stop praising pastors. Stop following bishops. That man cannot get you there. Praise God in his sanctuary. When you go to church, you go to worship God. You go to praise him in his sanctuary. Praise him in the fundament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sultry and harp. Praise him with the treble and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him up in the high sounding symbols. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. See, we've got to praise him before we even get our breakthrough. It's easy to say, thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus, and we love you, Lord, after the manifestation. But can you praise him in the middle of your trial? Can you trust him as Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego trusted him in the fire of furnace? Can you trust him all the way until your head is cut off like the apostle Paul? Can you trust him while you're in the lines then while nothing seems to be working? See, God will wait to the last minute, and that's how he always operates. For those who are really having faith and putting your trust in God, we're going to praise you, Lord, no matter what the situation or the circumstances. Or, whether you ever bless Pastor Whaley with anything else or not, I already know God is real. He don't have to convince me no more, brothers and sisters. Father, in the name, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, we humbly come before you this morning, thanking you for another day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. It'll never be another day like today, brothers and sisters. It will never be another day. Rejoice. Stop worrying about a harvest. I'm going to say that again. Too many of us are waiting on God to move, and God is waiting on you to move. I'm going to say that again. Too many of us are waiting for a a great harvest of money, but you're not going out there winning a great harvest of souls. I'm going to say that again. Stop waiting on God to move before you move. You move. The scripture says, you draw nigh to me. And he says, I will draw nigh to you. You take one step to God. And God will take the rest of the steps. You sow a seed to God. God will bless the seed that you sow. Too many people are waiting on God, and God is waiting on you. He cannot answer a prayer until you pray the prayer. Uh, it's like planting a seed, brothers and sisters. If you don't plant a seed, you're not going to get a harvest. If you got a bag of seeds, 
and you're a farmer, and you keep the seeds, and you do not plant the seeds in the ground, you will not get a harvest. You're going to eat the seed. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you give the people wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, Father. Father, I ask you to forgive us, Father. We repent of our sins this morning, knowingly and unknowingly. Father, for we all have fallen short of your glory each and every day. Lord, we thank you for food. We thank you for shelter. We thank you for clothing. Lord, we thank you for the gifts of the Spirit. We thank you for the fruits of the Spirit. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, may you continue to move in the supernatural faith church. See, the thing about God, I love the Lord. He'll make it look like ain't nothing working. He'll weed out all the ones who you thought was witch, and then God will bless you. That's how he does it. Walk by faith, brothers and sisters, not by sight. It's not about Pastor Whaley. Stop, stop centering your walk with God around a man of God or a woman of God and start centering your life around Christ Jesus. I'm going to say that again. Stop following man and start following the Lord. Stop depending on man. My dependency, I assure you, is not on any man on the face of this earth. I have a pastor. Yeah, I love him. But my Allegiance is to Christ. My trust is in Jesus, not in the man's power or man's wisdom. It's in the power of God. It's in the power of the Holy Spirit. I trust in God to deliver me. I trust in God to provide for me. I trust in God to sustain me. I trust that God is going to pull my soul, my spirit, up into heaven when I die and leave this earth. Do not trust in the world system. Do not trust in the God of mammon. This is something that God has placed on my heart. Too many people are trusting in money. Too many people are trusting God to give them a harvest before they even start to be obedient to God. We, if you got a rent in your pocket, line up with the will of God. God is Jehovah Jireh. He is the provider. He will make the provisions. Your ram is in a thicket. He fed the prophet with ravens. God multiplied the fish and the loaves. And you don't think he can get you a job? You don't believe that he's able to get the rent paid? You don't believe that he's able to sustain you? He sustained this pastor here for over three and a half years by simply having faith in God and continues to make the provisions. Even without people supporting him in the church, he continues to pull the provisions from places that I least likely expect. My God is more than able to make a way where there is no way. Put your trust in him. He'll get your bills paid. He will get your bills paid. Continue to sow seed and trust in God. Do not put your trust in money. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we rebuke the God of mammon. May he serve his purpose, your will, Father. May everything serve your purpose and your will, Father. May your will be accomplished in everybody's life that hears this prayer. Father, I pray that everybody that hears this prayer, that they are sealed into the day of redemption. Father, we decree and declare the blood of Jesus on the crown of everyone's head to the soles of their feet. Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit fills every man, woman, and child that hears this prayer. This overall plan of God is about salvation, brothers and sisters. It's about eternal, your eternal destination. We're here today gone tomorrow. Everything that you worried about today, you will not even take with you tomorrow when you're in the kingdom. Jesus said, take no thought. Take no thought for what you should eat, for what you should drink. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these 
provisions, natural provisions, things that men are so worried about shall be added unto you. We put God first on everything. If you bet on God, if you're a gambler, man, it ain't no problem when you bet on God because you're going to win every single time. You put your trust in God, you're going to win every single time. There's no losers in the kingdom of heaven. Everybody wins. Everybody profits. Everybody prospers unless you accept Jesus Christ. Do not get jealous of your brethren or your sisters who are being blessed financially or in any other way. God has enough blessing for us all, brothers and sisters. Father, today we ask you once more to forgive us for our sins, Lord. We repent. Father, cleanse us through the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father. And we thank you above all for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we thank you for dying for us. We thank you for shedding every precious, precious drop of your blood at the cross of Calvary. Father, we thank you for raising your son Jesus from the dead, for he is the resurrection. He is the life. No man comes to the Father, but by him you cannot get to God the Father. I'll promote Christ. And I'm going to continue to preach Jesus Christ and him crucified. Paul said, I count all a loss. Nothing on this earth made the intercessor to Paul. If Paul was living today, his car would not dictate him. His house would not dominate him. His career will not guide him. His focus was Jesus. He knew that only through Christ that mankind is going to be saved. Only through Jesus Christ that man will be preserved. Only through the Lamb's blood that you're going to be cleansed of all your sins once you put your trust in Jesus. Jesus said the work that you need, the work is to believe in me. Jesus said very clearly and plain. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He said, I am the true light. He said, I am the living bread. He said, I am the bread of life. He said, I am the living water. He said, I am the door. He said, I am the good shepherd. How many times Christ has to identify himself? And the reason, some of you may say, well, pastor, you preach this every day. Everybody hasn't got it, gotten it. This is what I preach, but everybody still has not gotten it. The light bulb still has not popped on over their head because many people have told me in times past, past, hey, I did not know that Jesus was Lord. I did not know he was that important. He's the most important thing that you need to read in the Bible. He is the key. He is the door. Jesus said, I am Alpha. And I am the Omega. That means he is the first, the last, the beginning, and the end. He is the Lamb of God. He is the King of kings. That's what you need to know. If you don't know anything else about this Bible, you need to know Jesus. If you have no relationship with him, you have no relationship with God. If you're a friend of Jesus, you are a friend of the Father. You cannot get to God the Father unless you go through Christ Jesus. Jesus is the propitiation, which is the atonement, which is the atoning sacrifice for your sins, my sins, and the world's sin. Put your trust in Christ. Put your trust in Jesus. You'll win every single time. Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that everyone that hears this prayer is that they're, they're filled with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit moves from the north, south, east. And with Father, I pray that you break every yoke, break every chain. Father, I pray that you break every stronghold, everything that the devil is sending at your people, Father. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Father, no weapon that is formed against Anyone on this radio broadcast shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against us in judgment, it shall be condemned. This is the heritage of the Lord's servants, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Greater is he that's on the inside of us 
then he that is in the world, if God be for us, who can be against us? Fear not, the scripture says, but God did not give us a spirit of fear, brothers and sisters, but a spirit of power, love. And a sound mind. Sound mind. That means you have no spirit of worry. You have no spirit of anxiety. You have no spirit of depression if you're putting your trust in God. You have no spirit of unbelief if you're putting your trust in God. And doubt if you're putting your trust in God. Because God will get you through every single time. Put your trust in Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you said what we bind on earth is bound in heaven, and what we loose on earth is loose in heaven. Father, in the authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name, we rebuke every principality, every false doctrine, every false prophet, every false prophetess, every false teacher, every misleading spirit, every spirit of error, every spirit of doubt, every spirit of confusion. Father, we come against every spirit of lust adultery, fornication, Father, every spirit of anger and bitterness and resentment and every spirit of the Antichrist, everything that's attacking the supernatural faith church and the people that's been on this radio broadcast, Father, we break those yokes and chains today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. Is victory in the name of Jesus. It's eternity in the name of Jesus. It's favor in the name of Jesus. Continue to put your trust in the Lord. Once you come into the knowledge of Christ, nothing else on this earth makes any sense. See, a lot of, God has told me, a lot of people are not converted. A lot of people are not filled with the Holy Spirit. Because I'm trying to figure out how can you preach any sermon without mentioning the Lord? How can you establish any church without it being Christ-centered, Jesus-centered? When we, and we call ourselves Christians and take out Jesus. How can you call yourself a Christian and be afraid to acknowledge Jesus as Lord before men? Jesus said, if you Deny me before men. I will deny you before my Father and the Holy Hand. He said, you acknowledge me before men. I will acknowledge you before my Father and the Holy Angels. Because men are ashamed of the gospel. They're ashamed of Christ. Paul said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it's the power of God unto them who believe. Stop giving fancy sermons without converting People, stop moving the crowd without winning souls. There's no power in the sermon without Christ. There will not be a move of the Holy Spirit unless it's Christ. Send it for him, the Father, and the Holy Spirit are one. He is the yoke breaker, Jesus is. He is the yoke breaker. He is the burden bearer. The Lord said, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. And God said, I will give you rest. See, a lot of us are getting 20 hours of sleep, but no rest. A lot of us are getting 20, 30 hours of sleep a night, seem like. No rest. You're taking naps. You're going to bed. You're eating. But you're still worrying. You had not put your total trust in Christ. Once you trust in God, you're at rest. Nothing else makes any sense. You're at peace. He said, I will keep those in perfect peace whose mind is staying focused on me, who put their trust in me. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3 through 6, 3 through 4, rather. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3 through 4. He says, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord, brother, says Proverbs 3. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he shall direct your path. Father, I pray that you order our footsteps. Direct our path. Father, I pray that you make something out of nothing. Take the least of things and make it into something mighty. Father, I pray that you bless every listener. Father, I speak increase, healing, and protection. Let them know, Father, that you are the only Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the only way to you.
that God the Father is the only way to happiness. Scripture, blessed means that you're happy. Look the word up. If you're blessed, nothing is missing. You can eat a, you can eat a sandwich without meat and you're happy. When you're blessed, because you know God can provide the meat, but you're happy if it ain't no meat. But God's going to provide more than meat. He's going to provide a meat factory. That's how God operates. He's going to give you more than what you expect. When you're blessed, you thank God for, for even the small things that he's given you because you know he's going to increase you with more. See, the joy of the Lord, the scripture said, is our strength. God will fill you with joy in the middle of your pain. God will make you laugh in the middle of your storm, in the middle of your trial. When something happens to me now, I just stop. Even if I'm driving, I stop and laugh about it because I know that my Lord is in charge. I know that God is in the middle. The, the, the evil on this planet is working for the good. The devil works for God. He can't do anything unless God allows it. Everything is working for the good. Even the false prophets are working for God. False prophets are actually leading people to Christ. We had a discussion about that at a brother's luncheon. God is using the false prophets to lead men to Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, who can resist you, Father, as the Scripture says? Who can go against God? Nobody. Father, we submit to you. Father, we worship you. We honor you. We magnify and we glorify your mighty name this morning, Lord. Blessed is the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Blessed is our Father in heaven. Father, I thank you. We thank you just for being God. We worship you, Lord. We adore you. We love you, Lord, for giving us another day, giving us another day to say thank you, Lord, giving us another day to breathe every breath of air. Father, we thank you for every breath of air. We thank you for allowing us to see. We thank you for allowing us to walk, Father. We thank you for creating us and sustaining us and maintaining us each and every day, Father. Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. In Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name, amen, 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 amen. Good morning, everyone. We're on Saturdays now. We've never did a broadcast on the weekend. But this is the point that God has led us to. We're going to, try to, we're going to do it at 10 a.m. We're going to have the radio broadcast 10 a.m. Central Time. I thank everyone that's on here now. I think we've probably got about 10 listeners on here. I don't know. I don't pay attention to it most of the time. I just see a bunch of numbers up here. Once I start uh, asking anyone if they have any comments, testimonies, uh, I'll start looking at it then. But we're going to get into the Word of God. Word of God. My, my, my words are pretty much this. If you don't see it in the Word, if your sermon is not coming from the Bible, don't believe it. I'm going to say that again. This may rub some of you in the wrong way, but if it ain't come, if I have a tool like the Bible and I call myself a preacher, a prophet, and I can give you God's word rather than my opinion, why not? This pastor has seen demons ejected out of people just simply by reading the word. That's how, that's how I cast demons out. I read the scripture. The demons cannot take the word of God being read. That's why I think a lot of preachers can't take the word of God because they got too many spirits on their side of them. But the word, if you don't hear from the word, don't believe it. Jesus said, Father, thy word is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. As you read this word, you are sanctified. As you read this word, you are purified. You are made whole. This word carries more power than an atomic bomb. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out the mouth of God, you need some spiritual nutrients and vitamins. See, operating naturally is not enough. 
You that spirit man must be activated. He's dormant on the inside of you. And when you read the word of God, he is activated. You must bring that inner man alive. And the only way you can bring him alive is through the word of God. Through the power of God, through the Holy Spirit, Spirit through accepting Jesus Christ. Only thing that can fill the emptiness on the inside of you is, is the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters. Only God can fill that emptiness. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Verse 1, and this is Jesus, this is the sermon on the mountain. Jesus said, the multitude went up into the mountain, and when he was set, when he sat down, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Notice, not to, no, notice before I start reading, he didn't say blessed is the rich. For the record, I'm mentioning that. He didn't say no way in the same amount. Blessed are the rich, for they are very rich. Listen to verse, the how he starts out. He said blessed are the poor. In spirit, the broken, contrite spirit, those who have repented and come to God. This is why I preach the way that I preach. You ain't going to come to God all happy. When you give him your heart, the heart is broken. He must break that heart. He must break that hard heart. He must break that powerful spirit up out of you so you can repent and turn to him. He said, bless on the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. God had to break past away and fold me up into the press. Show me that I wasn't right at things. Take the pride up out of me. And you're no exception. They say, oh, yeah, Pastor, you're full of pride. Ha, ha. You're no exception. He's going to break us all and take that powerful spirit and bring forth a spirit of meekness, a spirit of love, a spirit of kindness and goodness. He said, bless are the poor in spirit. For there is the kingdom of heaven. Bless are they that mourn. He said, bless are they that mourn. For they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Listen to that verse 6. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Are you hungry and are you thirsting after righteousness? He said, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst. After righteousness, for they shall be filled, and you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Keep searching for righteousness. See, keep searching for holiness. Keep searching for sanctification. Keep repenting. Keep reading the Word. Keep asking God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. He'll fill you with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of righteousness, the Spirit of truth, the Spirit of peace. Verse 7. Therefore, the merciful, for they shall obtain Mercy. Bless are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Bless are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Bless are they. Listen at the scriptures. I don't think we listen. We just, we hear it. But are you listening to what God is saying is blessed? It's totally contrary to what the world is blessed. Why are you seeking things that are not blessed when God is telling you what's blessed? Blessed are they which are persecuted. Listen at this. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Wow, you're going to be persecuted for righteousness' sake. So if you're a righteous preacher, preaching righteousness, people are going to leave your church. They ain't going to like you. Other preachers ain't going to like you. Folks are going to hate you. He said, blessed are they, Jesus said, which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I rather suffer for righteousness than wickedness. That's why I preach the way I preach. Man's opinion of me don't matter. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say, I might have evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice, Jesus says, and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward 
in heaven. So so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Think about serving God that you must understand. When you live in your life according to righteousness, you will be persecuted. When you love in people, you will be hated. When you line your life up to do the will of God, people will not like you. People will not follow you. Start living for God. Start doing the will. Start praying. Start and my, not my will be done, but your will be done in my ministry and in my life. We're not politicians, brothers and sisters. We're men and women of God. Stop trying to win the favor of man and start winning the favor of God because stop depending on men to sustain that ministry financially when God can supersede that. God can take them out the equation and still sustain you. That's why people preach compromising messages, God has told them, because they're dependent on financial provisions for men. Continue to preach Christ. God can make the provisions. Verse 13, ye are the salt of the earth. You put salt in anything, you're going to taste it. But if the salt has lost its savor, where which shall it be salted? Jesus says. It is tense for good for nothing but to be cast out and to be thrown under the foot of men. When you just slide on something, you're going to taste it every single time. That's why Jesus said you are the salt of the earth. Once they see you, they see Jesus. You ain't even got to say a word. They see Christ in you. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill cannot be healed. There is no such thing as a down low Christian. There is no such thing as an undercover Christian. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Jesus goes on and says, Think not that I come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. God did not come to take the law in the Old Testament or the prophets out, but to fulfill the law. Because a lot of people say, Well, we ain't under the law anymore. We're under grace, yes, but God's word is still in place. His word does not return void. His word, see, the law is desi designed to condemn man, but God superseded his own law and gave you grace, which is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But his word is still his word. His law is still his law, but he gave you grace to keep you from being condemned under his law. For verily I say, Jesus says unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or tittle, shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least of the, the commandments, and shall teach men, so he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. What was the Pharisees and the scribes? They were given 30%. If you read the scripture, they were given over 30% in tithes and offerings. And see, this is where the church has gotten to now. As long as I pay my tithes, everything's going to be okay. The devil is a lie. Tithes is just a simple, uh, just a small piece of the puzzle. The focus needs to be on Jesus. The focus needs to be on Christ. The focus needs to be on discipleship. The focus needs to be on renewing your mind through the reading of the word of God. The focus needs to be on fellowship. The focus needs to be on love. Love your neighbor as yourself. Forgiveness. Amen, amen. You have heard that it was said by them of all time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever 
which your kids shall be in danger of judgment. He says, but I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. That's people that's hating for no reason. And, he, you, and matter of fact, there is no reason to hate. There is no reason to hate. Hate is not a part of God's kingdom. Hate is not a part of the plan of God. See, once you're born again filled with the Holy Spirit, there is no spirit of hate on the inside of you. There's a spirit of peace, a spirit of love. That's the fruits of the Spirit. See, that hate is a manifestation of the flesh. Pride is a manifestation of the flesh. Selfishness, self-righteousness is a manifestation of the flesh and the world. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, that means empty head shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hell's fire. I'm just reading the scriptures, brothers and sisters. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and thou rememberest that thy brother has anything against thee. God says, before you bring your gift to the altar, go make peace with your brother. Before you give, go make peace with your sister. It's more important to do those things before you bring your gift to the altar. Don't go to that altar with hate on your heart. Let's go to verse 24. He says, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way first. Be reconciled to thy brothers, and then come and offer thy gift. Go make your peace with your brothers and sisters. Then God says, come to the altar. And offer your gifts. He's talking, matter of fact, he's talking about tithes and offering, modern translation, brothers and sisters. Agree with thine adversary quickly while thou art in the way with him, least at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou shalt be cast into prison. For I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out till thou hast paid the uttermost for thee. Let's go to, uh, we're going to stop there. We're going to stop there. But, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that this word has touched someone out there, Father. May it touch someone out there. May it uproot unclean spirits. Father, I pray that this word bless the listeners out there. Father, your word does not return void. See, I could have sit here for the last 30 minutes and given them my opinion and my words, Father, but your words are blessed. Your words are holy. Even if we don't get a full understanding, just reading the scriptures uproots some things on the inside of us that's there, Father. But we're not always going to understand everything to us fully, but we know that it's your words, Father. Your words are purifying. Your words are sanctifying. Father. Your words are holy, Father. Your words bring forth life just reading it. Even if you don't understand it all when I read it, it brings forth resurrecting life because those are God's words. His words do not return void. They accomplish what they were sent out to do. Father, blessed, uh, blessed is the God of Israel, Father. And Father, bless Israel. Father, you said we will, you will bless those who bless Israel. You will curse those who curse Israel. We pray for the peace of Israel, Father, of Jerusalem. Father, we pray for America to return back to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Father, I pray that you continue to break yokes and strongholds in my brethren and my sisters' lives. Father, let them know. This, this, the, well, God, it hurts my heart as a pastor that people still are not understanding who Jesus is and who and the plan of God. This plan of God supersedes your agenda. This plan of God goes far beyond your ministry, my ministry. This plan of God goes far beyond human intellect or comprehension. This thing is about the Lord, brothers and sisters. Every, every mountain shall be brought low. Every violent, Scripture says, shall be exalted. Every man-made structure ain't going to be here. Everything the Scripture says is going to melt with the fervent heat. But he that doeth the will of the Father abideth forever. 
are you doing the will of the Father? You will abide forever once you enter into his will. Father, may your will be fulfilled on the inside of our, inside, uh, 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 in our lives, Father. Father, I pray a blessing over everybody's house. Father, I pray a blessing over our children, over our health over every area of our lives, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. And amen. Father, and I pray for Brother Dirk. I pray for Evangelist Gail. I pray for Sister Kim. I pray for Sister Stacy. I pray for Sister Elizabeth. Father, I pray a blessing over Brother Brian. I pray a blessing over all, both Brother Brian, all the Brother Brian's that come on here. Brother Devin, I speak a blessing over that brother. I speak a blessing over brother Robert Beasley and all the listeners out there, Father. Father, I pray that a supernatural hedge of protection over Sister Chastity, Father, over, over everybody that's listening in on his radio broadcast. Bless them, Father. Cover them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Give your angels charge over them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Stop fearing. The enemy. The enemy has, I have no fear for the enemy. My fear is in the Lord. The devil is nobody. God is everything. He cannot curse what God has blessed. You cannot curse what God has blessed. Father, I come against every demonic force that's been praying against us, every devil worshiper. Father, let them know and feel the power of God. God, in the name of Jesus Christ, scriptures that good will always conquer evil, light will always overpower darkness, righteousness will always triumph over unrighteousness, Father. The blessing is stronger than a curse. Father, I thank you for everything you have done, that you are doing, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen, amen. Amen. I'm going to have to be back on this radio broadcast. God's been having me do some other things, but uh, we're going to try to do it once a week. We're opening up the uh, radio broadcast line for anybody that would like to come in. I'm just going to name some names. I haven't been on the radio broadcast in a while, uh, but uh, is Brother Derek on? Are you on this morning? Brother Derek, are you on this morning? Amen, amen. Uh, Sister Stacy, are you on this morning? Sister Stacy, are you on this morning? Yes, good morning. I'm here. I'm just so happy to hear the word because it makes us, it, it sets us straight. You be going through so much sometimes and you say, I'm not blessed because I'm going through so much, but, but, Reading this word lets us know we are the best ones because we, we suffer and we're persecuted for righteousness' sake. And God just let us know that we're best because of that. And I'm, I'm just thankful for that word because it, 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 it tells us the truth and it makes us, uh, you know, just to know the truth about our situation. So I've been blessed. Amen. And God bless you all. Amen. God bless you, Sister Stacy. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we continue to speak increase healing and protection over Sister Stacy, over her children, over her health, over every area of her life, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless her and give her a uh, refreshing or reviving of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, have your will and your way in her life, in Jesus Christ of Magic's name. Amen, amen, amen. Do we have any new listeners on here this morning that would like to comment? Amen. Any new listeners on here? Amen. Uh, Evangelist Gail, are you on this morning? Good morning, Pastor Whaley, and good morning, Supernatural Faith Broadcast. Good morning. Good morning, Evangelist Gill. Well, as always, thank you for the word, Pastor Whaley. I truly appreciate it. I continue to let God use you mightily. And you're touching many people's lives, whether you know it or not. You know, because I know as being a minister myself, people don't always tell us thank you sometimes, or they don't acknowledge us 
even though we know it's God's doing, but sometimes it's good to hear, you know, we appreciate you. But I want to let you know that we do appreciate you, and I do appreciate what you're doing for the kingdom of God. And um, I just want to say to the listeners is that the same way, you know, it's amazing when you hear a well-known pastor name, you know, we, we flock to them and we want to run to them. But the real thing, that we, the real person we should be serving is the Lord because these pastors, the Lord made them. The Lord put them in these positions. But it's just amazing how people are praising them more than they praising the Lord. And that's not right. So I wish we get it together. I wish we changed it. And I wish that we focus and depend upon Jesus the way they depend upon a man or a woman Amen. that Preacher. is a woman or a man of God. So I just want to say let's get our focus right. Let's not praise a man more than Jesus. So be blessed on today. Amen, Evangelist Gail, because that man will not be able to get you there. And when that man falls, the whole the whole congregation falls, and people leave the church for 20, 30 years. You didn't have no business following that man to begin with. That's right. You know, you know. So, and you become church hurt, and that the devil sits back and laughs. That the devil is a lie. Put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Do not. Put your trust in Pastor Whaley, but put your trust in the Lord. And no, and don't put your trust in any bishop or any prophet or prophetess. Right. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, I speak a blessing over Evangelist Gail, over her ministry, over her health, over her children, over her finance, over everything that she puts her hands to continue to bless the woman of God, continue to lead the woman of God and direct her footsteps, continue to lead her to the right people in the right place, doing the right things. And, Father, I pray that you open the floodgates of heaven and pour out blessings in which she's not able to contain in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. God bless you, mighty woman of God. Continue to do what God has called you to do. That's all I can tell you, Evangelist Gary. Continue doing what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Is, uh, amen. Amen. Is, um, sister, sister, uh, sister uh, Elizabeth, are you on this morning? Sister Elizabeth. Uh, sister, sister, sister Kim, are you on this morning? Of course I'm on, Pastor Wesley. Good morning, Supernatural State Broadcast. Good morning to everyone. I could just hear the Lord saying, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sin, it is in the seat of the scornful. Thank you, Lord God. We thank you this morning for Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and our Savior. We thank you this morning, God, for all of your blessings that you rain down upon us. God, thank you, Father, for ear to hear, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, for a voice, a voice crying in the wilderness, Lord. We bless you on this morning, uh, Pastor. Um, I really did miss you guys. I really, really did. I was looking forward this morning. I got on this on Monday, and then finally I got that text message. I said, oh, God, thank you, because it was really a revival, a real revival. So I bless God on this morning, and I I. I want to say hello to everyone, all the, the listeners, um, all of the ministers that um, have joined us or who have continued to be here. And uh, that's about it. Amen. Amen. Nice to hear your voice, uh, Sister Kim. We have, we're going to do it one day out the week, uh, Saturday at 10 a.m. Whatever reason God got us doing like this, uh, so be it. I, you know, I, I love the Lord. And we may, a soul may get saved that's never been saved. God's way. As you begin, as you begin this faith journey as a minister, you're going to find out God's way are not our way. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Mm-hmm. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we speak a blessing over Sister Kim, over her children, over her ministry, Father, over every area of her life. Father, continue to prosper her in everything she puts her hands to. Father, we speak the Holy Spirit. 
Give her refreshing of the Holy Spirit. Continue to give her that revelational knowledge that's on the inside of her. Even give her greater revelational knowledge. God, continue to give her dreams and visions and direct her and instruct her in the ways of righteousness, holiness, and truth in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we thank you. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you, woman of God, Sister Kim. Nice to hear everyone's voice on this uh, internet radio broadcast. It's all about fellowship. It's all about fellowship. What we need to be is patient and wait on the Lord. Because when God bless you with, with what you uh Thank you should be blessed with it. always going to be a what next. Jesus Amen. said the flesh is never satisfied. He said, make the Lord. This came from Jesus. He said, make no provisions for the flesh. Have no confidence in the flesh. Have no trust in the flesh. He said, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. Let's so into spiritual things. Continue to, God says he's looking for true worshipers, brothers and sisters. Those who are going to worship him. Spirit and truth. Jesus said, those are the worshipers which the Father seeketh. Those who are going to worship him in spirit and in truth. Those who are crying out to God, asking God for his assistance. That's what God yeah. is looking for, brothers and sisters. You know, he ain't looking. Ain't none of us perfect. We're striving for perfection. We're worshiping the perfected one, which is Jesus and our heavenly Father. But we got to depend on him. Put your dependency on God. Put your trust in the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Sister Kim, you continue doing what, what you're doing, woman of God. Amen. Is there anyone else on here that would like to speak before we get ready to close down the radio broadcast? Any newcomers on here? Anyone would like to give a testimony? I know we got a couple more callers on here. Amen. The floor is open for anyone got any testimonies. And, Anything that you would like to share? Pastor Whaley, I, I have something. This is Evangelist okay. Gail. Mm -hmm. And, um, okay. you know, I've, I've been in the ministry for a while, but um, God always seems to amaze me. And I'll make it short, the testimony. But um, I got a chance to uh, minister in Pakistan on this Thursday. But, and we did it via Skype. But it was different for me because I've never had somebody to interpret the word for me. And by them interpreting the word of um, God while you're preaching, you know, you can lose your focus, you can lose your, your, your space because normally when you're flowing in the spirit, you're just going, you're just speaking and speaking and speaking. But when I had to minister over there, I had to preach and then let them interpret it and then preach, and then let them interpret. But I thank God because they could see me on the screen, but I couldn't see them. But the Holy Ghost stepped in, and even though I couldn't see them, the Holy Ghost started calling people out by their names, and they were standing up, and, and the Holy Ghost was just speaking to them what was needed for them and blessing them and miracles. But I say all that to say is I realized that even though I couldn't see them, What's so cold-blooded about God is he's awesome, and he ministered to everybody, and I couldn't see him. So that means I had to use my ears to listen to the Spirit of God speak to me as I ministered to them. And they had no idea that I could not see them. But I just want to thank God because I never experienced that before. It was awesome. And every time, you know, we think God can't top something, he always tops something again and again, and again. So I just want to share that with you guys. It was an awesome experience for me. And I thank God for showing me that he can continue to bless us every day, a different way, a different avenue, because mm. he is God. And that's why I keep telling everybody, don't pr don't praise the evangelist, don't praise the pastor. Amen. Give God, give God the glory. So thank you for letting me share my testimony. You guys be blessed. Amen. That's a powerful 
testimony, women of God. And, Father, I pray that you continue to open up the world to Evangelist Gail. Let the woman of God reach places that she that, that 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 are unreachable. Father, continue to use her for your glory. Father, continue to bless her, the fruits of her lips and the fruits of her labor. In the name of Jesus Christ, we continue to pray for a great harvest of souls around the world. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Amen. God, that's a powerful testimony, Evangelist Gail. That's why the Scripture says, "Walk by faith." Not by sight, even with I, we, even without seeing anybody, they were still saved, Father. Because God connected in the spirit, you know. That's amazing. The evangelist, get it. We got we got about five minutes left on this radio broadcast. One of God, you think you can take us out in prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, let us get a personal relationship with you, Heavenly Father. Let us keep our temple clean so that you can use us mightily. Let us turn away from things that we know that is not of you, O oh Heavenly Father. God, continue to, God, continue to show us the way. Continue to show us your will, O oh Heavenly Father. And I ask for a supernatural prayer for everybody on this line, O oh Heavenly Father. I send the word to them, the same thing that you did for me. You can do it for my brothers and sisters on this prayer line. Your word said you're not a respectable person. So what you did for mm. Evangelist Gibbs, you can do for my brothers and sisters. And I pray, and I love you guys, and in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, give us this day, Father, our daily bread, and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, Father, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the king and the power and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto her and unto his sons, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee, hallelujah, and keep thee. And the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel. And I will bless them. Father, I speak the same blessings over everyone on this radio broadcast. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, we come against every principality, everything that's been exalting itself, everything that's been putting up resistance against my brothers, against my sisters, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, break every stronghold, everything that the devil has meant for evil, Father, turn it in good, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, everybody that's not on here, Father, that is going through great trials, everybody that's on here, everybody that's ever been on this radio broadcast that's going through any trial or tribulation, Father, I pray that you sustain them from hurt, harm, danger, negative incidents, as well as accidents. Father, we plead, we decree, and declare the blood of Jesus over every area of their life. Father, continue to give your angels charge over us, Father. Break every plan, cancel every plan. Father, I pray that you blind the enemy, paralyze the enemy. May the enemy not be able to see what we're doing, blind and Stop him in his footsteps, freeze him in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Father, loose your Holy Spirit. Loose all the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all spiritual blessings through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers. 
And I stand in agreement with all my brothers and all my sisters that's on this internet, radio, broadcast in the morning. Glorious, victorious name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we give you all the praise, we give you all the honor, we give you all the glory, we magnify, we thank you for the great harvest of souls, the evangelist girl that's come through Pakistan in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and we thank you, Lord, amen, amen, God bless you guys, I will see you next Saturday on the Supernatural Faith Internet radio broadcast. God bless you guys. You guys have a blessed weekend and a blessed week.